Hi, my name is Brett. I'm one of the certified financial planners here at Parallel Wealth. And today I wanted to talk about how to estimate your CPP, uh, sometimes with more accurate information than what you'll get from Service Canada in your statement of contributions, especially if you're thinking about retiring before 65. So for example, here's the um, Service Canada website. And if you scroll down pretty much towards the bottom, you will see this contribution section and you can either get uh, information about your CPP contributions to date or you can get information about what your estimated monthly benefits are. Now the challenge here is let's say you're 57 you're thinking about um, retiring early the estimated monthly benefits will assume that whatever money you've been making in the past will continue until you're 65. So if you stop working at 57 or 60, you won't have those remaining contributions. I know we've touched on this a little bit in, in previous videos. And as well, you'll have less of a dropout period. If you know about dropout periods with, uh, with CPP, uh, the, uh, the earlier we stop making contributions to CPP or the less number of months or years we, we make contributions to CPP. So if you go over to, and obviously these uh, links will be in the um, uh, description below. If you go to the government of, web, uh, government of Canada website, they have this thing called a Canadian Retirement Income Calculator. I'm just going to show you quickly the home page. So the, uh, the main page that if you do a Google search for this, you'll have all kinds of information and it'll talk about what kind of browser you're supposed to have and things like that. And you hit continue here and you'll end up on the page that I was on. Now there is a lot of good information here beyond the CPP, but we're just gonna focus on the CPP portion of it in, in this video. So you just have to put in the month and year that you were born. So I'm gonna use myself as an example. Uh, we don't need gender to, uh, to figure out what we're going to figure out, but it is a required uh, uh, field. And then after you put in those two, uh, two or three things, you go to Canada Pension Plan, and for these drop down lists, you'll pick the, the pension plan that's applicable to you, Canada Pension Plan or Quebec Pension Plan. And here we're gonna state that we do not have the statement of contributions because I want to force the question um, or the answer in the next one, which is estimate based on my expected earnings. So it will provide you with uh, this uh, list here. The ages might be a little bit different because it will uh, uh, have this point here of the current your current age and then these are your future ages so for example let's go back and say okay during uh high late high school university i made ten thousand dollars on average during that period so these are averages for that period and then i graduated from university and let's just say i made twenty five thousand uh, for that period and then thirty thousand and just you know slowly increased uh, pretty level in terms of my income. And uh, there I am at 50, 51. So let's just say, okay, I, I expect to have the same level of increases. And I'm picking these numbers specifically because the CPP contributions that are associated with these salaries are um, uh, lower than the maximum contributions. We'll just do the last one here. This is somebody who uh, has made $25,000 um, uh, in their full-time working life and it slowly went up with inflation or whatever the, the number is. And over here you can see that the Canada Pension Plan is estimated to be about $10,800 annually if I took it at 65. Now you can play around with this down here about when you plan to receive it and if you plan on um, working after you start your CPP, but I would suggest leaving those um, uh, for now because you can compare apples to apples. Now let's go back to our situation. So I'm not working until uh, uh, 60, uh, 65. I'm planning on retiring early at 57. So I'm not gonna be making any income. So let's watch this number over here. So we've just gone down by about $1,000 a year, taxable. And then I'm only gonna work till 57. So $45,000 may not be exactly it. It might be closer to 40, 35. So now I've gone from 10,800 to 9,200. So that's quite a, quite a difference. Now let's look at the same idea, except for somebody who's made maximum CPP from the uh, beginning of uh, their career. So again, I'm gonna leave the 
late high school, college, university years um, at, at 10,000. And I am going to go to 35,000, which was approximately the salary that would get you the maximum CPP contributions uh, back in uh, 25 plus years ago. And then again, just doing the same slow increases, 40, 45, 50, 55. So this person here is making just under uh, or relatively under the, the maximum contributions. The maximum contribution right now is of uh, this video is, is approximately $65,000 or if you make $65,000 or more, you're making the maximum contribution, ignoring the enhanced CPP that's coming in in uh, the next year or so. So now uh, my CPP is going to be about $14,000 a year, but once again, not work until 65. So no more money uh, for this range and this range, let's make it about 50K. And now I'm down to 12,000. So my Service Canada, if this was me, my Service Canada CPP statement of contribution and uh, estimated CPP would show that I will probably receive $14,000 at 65, but they don't know that I plan to retire early. They know my past, so if I had taken a few years off, started a business, whatever the case may be, uh, I had a corporation was taking dividends only for that period of time or very small uh, salary, they will know that information, but they won't know what my future is. So it's important, I believe, to know what our expected CPP uh, might be and not be going off uh, completely the Service Canada information because, again, they don't know what our, our future is. They don't even know if, if we might, unfortunately, lose our job for, for a period of time or be disabled or, or something like that. The other thing that this, or the one thing that this doesn't include is what's called the child rearing provisions, whereas if you are the um, primary caregiver at home with kids under the age of seven and have reduced income because of that, then uh, there is a good possibility that when you apply for CPP, they, uh, Service Canada will reduce or forgive those lower income years and therefore increasing your, your CPP average. You've probably seen our videos before with, with Doug, for example, the um, expert on, on CPP and, and how he uh, will create calculations based on child rearing provisions and that is the only source that, that uh, I know of right now. So go to Service Canada, get your statement of contributions, but also come to this government uh, website and uh, play around with it, especially if you're considering retiring well before or stopping CPP contributions well before uh, 65, or if you have a, um, a corporation and you're planning on taking more dividends than salary, you can see how that's going to affect uh, CPP as well. And then you might want to play around with these other tabs here as, as well. There's some interesting information on, on this site. I hope that helps and look forward to seeing you in the next video. All the best.